until now we have been looking at uh, what are known as uh, 1D flows and uh, we have looked at important uh, definitions like the star properties and the stagnation uh, properties and now uh, let us look at uh, something that is more uh, interesting and very often found in um, compressible flow situations uh, particularly when the flow goes uh, supersonic that is uh, the uh, normal shock uh, or the shock wave and a particular uh, uh, condition is normal shock shock waves are present in uh, supersonic uh, flows uh, and now we will analyze and understand about uh, normal shocks uh, which is one specific case of uh, the uh, shock waves okay so let's look at uh, what is a uh, shock wave so shock wave is a uh, flow feature that appears and uh, you should understand very strictly that it appears only in uh, supersonic flows that um, the flow should have a Mach number greater than 1 so uh, that is sort of clearly mentioned over here flow is happening in this direction so this is the uh, normal shock okay so this is a shock wave okay so in any shock wave uh, it appears only in uh, conditions where the flow is supersonic Mach number is greater than 1 and um, across the shock wave there is a uh, sudden jump in uh, pressure temperature and density they all uh, jump to a much higher values while uh, the flow decelerates uh, across the shock its velocity decreases and its Mach number decreases. So, uh, in general the principle of uh, the shock is uh, clearly given by this uh, schematic uh, m2 is less than m1 across the shock uh, p2 is greater than p1 and uh, rho 2 is greater than rho 1 t2 is greater than t1. So, uh, shock is uh, something which compresses uh, the gas and uh, increases its pressure temperature and density while uh, reducing its um, uh, velocity. Uh, now, um, if you look at this uh, shock waves, these shock waves are extremely thin when they uh, are produced, uh, they are uh, thickness is, is typically of the order of uh, the molecular mean free path itself. Uh, so, now you see the shock wave uh, and this structure of a shock wave or uh, what happens inside the shock wave uh, is something which falls under uh, the regime of uh, higher Natsa numbers and uh, that is why, uh, but uh, being so small when you look at continuum flows uh, then uh, a shock wave is actually considered as a discontinuity. So, in all our analysis uh, in gas dynamics uh, we take the shock to be a uh, discontinuity in the flow and uh, uh, we apply we analyze uh, for uh, the conditions across the shock wave not uh, for what is happening uh, within the shock wave. Uh, within the shock wave uh, the processes of uh, viscosity and thermal conductivity uh, they uh, sort of uh, dominate or but it is really uh, we cannot uh, put it under the same uh, class. So, rather for us you need to know uh, it is so thin that you can consider that as a discontinuity and then uh, you need to know what happens to pressure, temperature, velocity across the shock wave. So, that is what uh, we do uh, in uh, gas dynamics we analyze for the uh, jump conditions across the uh, shock. So, even before we go there uh, what we need to understand is uh, why do and how do these uh, shock waves uh, uh, actually develop and they how do they form ok. So, to understand uh, that um, uh, it is really useful to look at some simple uh, problems. Uh, which are analogous to uh, the fluid flow equations and uh, see what happens to those uh, equations uh, 
uh, when uh, non-linearities become important and uh, then see how uh, that can lead to the formation of uh, uh, shocks. To understand this, uh, we will take a very simple um, uh, uh, 1D uh, partial differential equation which is advection equation actually um, which is uh, uh, dou u by dou t which is where u is any variable that is getting uh, advected uh, plus c dou u by dou x equal to uh, 0. Okay. So, this is uh, a, um, it's a hyperbolic equation uh, and it admits uh, wave like uh, solutions. It is uh, some quantity u is getting advected with a constant speed c and uh, this is a linear advection equation in 1D. And if you look at its uh, nature and we have discussed the uh, Navier-Stokes equations in uh, previous classes, you would uh, see there is a familiarity of this term which appears in the uh, acceleration terms, uh, temporal and convective acceleration terms of the Navier-Stokes uh, equation. So, uh, let us see how this uh, behaves uh, if there is a smooth uh, initial uh, solution. So, if there is a e smooth initial condition uh, applied then how does this behave? To look at this uh, since it is a hyperbolic equation we look at how it propagates um, in uh, space and time and uh, it can be shown uh, very easily see uh, that u is a function of x comma t. And uh, if you are really looking at the total derivative du, uh, it is dou u by dou t multiplied by dt plus dou u by dou x dx. Uh, now, uh, if you uh, look at what is it is going to change in time, this is dou u by dou t plus dx by dt by dou x. Now, you see there is this term dx by dt and if you compare it with the original equation at its place you have uh, the speed of convection c which is taken to be a constant here. So, if you write dx by dt equal to c uh, then uh, you get uh, these are actually lines x minus c t uh, equal to some constant. So, some constant k. So, x minus c t equal to uh, k some constant. So, these are uh, lines in the field uh, or in this uh, t x space and uh, if you look at uh, these lines if you take it uh, take the solution along these lines then according to this equation d u by d t is equal to 0 or u uh, remains constant another constant along the lines uh, x minus uh, c t. So, these lines x minus uh, c t are called the characteristic lines they uh, propagate the information in the uh, t x uh, plane uh, and uh, the solution progresses along these uh, particular uh, characteristic uh, lines. Uh, so, now these lines have been drawn in this dx plane uh, across like this uh, is shown by these black lines. So, uh, if you want to find the solution at certain uh, another time let us say in this case uh, at 0 0.5 seconds then uh, all you have to do is to drop a characteristic uh, back all the way uh, this is x minus c t equal to some constant say k 1, it is dropped all the way back to uh, the time when t equal to uh, 0. Then at that point whatever uh, the value of u is there that value gets uh, 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 is coming at this particular point at 0 0.5 seconds. So, what you see is actually that uh, whatever initial smooth form was given that has uh, simply uh, convected 
by seeing that there is no change in the uh, shape or the form itself and it has moved uh, just in the same way okay there is no change in uh, shape okay so uh, now remember this particular uh, kind of this uh, uh, equation how uh, a smooth form gets uh, convected in this uh, linear equation and uh, having seen this let us compare this to what happens if there is a simple nonlinearity but before going there just look at uh, the um, uh, solution uh, an animation of the solution uh, in time which is uh, looped over again and again so that I will uh, stay at this point for some time so you can understand that starting from the same profile it is simply convecting uh, down without any change in the uh, shape so it just propagates so this is uh, by solving the same equations uh, whatever uh, has been uh, described in the previous uh, uh, slide in the uh, in uh, numerically and uh, the solution is being plotted in uh, time. So, now uh, there you saw that uh, the slopes which were actually uh, going all the way uh, in, in constant uh, slopes they were having uh, a value c okay so now let us uh, consider the case from that simple uh, problem another uh, problem of a nonlinear advection equation in uh, one dimension if you consider the uh, nonlinear advection equation uh, here uh, we introduce a uh, nonlinearity that uh, the speed of advection or convection is uh, uh, really uh, dependent on um, uh, the uh, solution itself c is equal to u so at every uh, instance uh, depending on the solution the speed of advection will also uh, change okay now the uh, development of these uh, equations are very similar uh, just like we saw in the uh, previous case that they move uh, along uh, lines at of constant sort of uh, uh, not uh, they move along uh, lines uh, but here the slopes of those lines are not uh, constant but it depends on the uh, solution so now let's see that we have a very smooth uh, initial uh, profile which uh, it has a, a smooth nature uh, you see first it is increasing and then it is decreasing now this is a t x curve so uh, if you look at this uh, uh, essentially the slope is d t by d x which is 1 by mm, uh, c or in this case it is 1 by u where u is the solution here ok so now uh, uh, so let us see how this uh, changes now when u is uh, 0 these are straight lines vertical lines now as u slowly begins to increase we see that dt by uh, dx starts uh, decreasing that is they start uh, moving um, towards the slopes start moving towards the x axis and uh, um, then as uh, it reaches the uh, it passes the uh, hump and starts decreasing again we see that um, uh, dt by dx uh, it starts increasing again now let us follow the uh, way these um, uh, slopes move first they uh, open out expand like that of a uh, like that like a fan they just expand out uh, expand out uh, and then uh, once they start coming back in they close uh, together uh, all of them close together so uh, the what happens to the shape of the profile when uh, these characteristics um, sort of expand uh, they stretch the profile but when they come together they uh, bring it compress the profile and make it sharp and this can continue to happen and thereby defining a very sharp uh, profile 
So, at, so if you see uh, how the uh, process happens here, you see that uh, the wave here, uh, the what was initially a smooth profile as uh, in succeeding uh, intervals of time, it has deformed and continued to deform and has uh, come to a very uh, sharp profile. If allowed to go on its own, uh, this can uh, generate solutions like this, uh, where you can have uh, sort of multiple, these are in real processes, these do not happen. Uh, in real processes, you have uh, viscosity and uh, thermal conductivity, these play a uh, dominant role when such large uh, gradients are produced. So, um, when gradients become really high, those processes kick in and finally, what you get is essentially a very sharp front, which uh, uh, is the uh, shock front. So, just by the uh, non-linear process, so this uh, equation, whatever we are seeing over here is the non-linear advection equation and uh, this uh, non-linear part, if you take um, uh, the one-dimensional uh, system of flow equations in the differential form, this forms the left-hand side of the equations. So, the non-linearity is present in a uh, in the gas dynamic equations actually uh, lead uh, to the formation of shocks from uh, initially smooth uh, profiles. So, this uh, sort of uh, indicates how uh, discontinuities can be produced in uh, such uh, flows. Let us see uh, how this, uh, tra this transforms. So, uh, what you can see here is actually the uh, solution of this uh, non-linear form of the equations um, uh, and uh, done numerically and uh, plotted in time and uh, you can notice that an initially smooth profile is changing its uh, shape continuously and coming becoming sharper and sharper. So, this uh, kind of process is called uh, uh, wave uh, steepening. So, uh, this wave steepening process ultimately uh, in the end uh, leads to the uh, formation of um, shock waves uh, in the flow. So, now uh, let us come to uh, uh, gas dynamics uh, or similar. Uh, so, from the uh, simple uh, analogous equations or mathematical forms that we were looking at and see physically what is uh, happening in the flow. Uh, uh, so, similar uh, one dimensional considerations, let us take a, a long tube in which you have uh, a piston and uh, let us say the piston is getting. Uh, accelerated. So, now as the uh, piston increases its uh, velocity, what uh, you, you should know that uh, piston in a tube as you move it, it will produce pressure waves, compression waves. So, uh, the moment it begins moving and it starts accelerating at uh, each instant of time, it produces uh, compression waves. And uh, these compression waves uh, travel through the uh, gaseous fluid inside uh, the tube. Okay, so that's what is being uh, depicted over here. Uh, you have a series of uh, compression waves that are getting uh, generated. Now uh, let's see what happens uh, when you have the first uh, mm, uh, compression wave going into the tube. Okay, so, now when the first compression wave goes into the tube, it very slightly compresses uh, the flow, uh, the fluid here and here in at this point you would have uh, the pressure if this was uh, P um, at P 1, uh, this is just after the uh, compression wave, it would be slightly higher than P 1 and similarly temperature would be slightly higher than. Uh, T 1. 
Now, uh, you look at uh, what happens to the uh, acoustic speed or the speed of sound in the region uh, behind the first compression wave. Because the temperature has slightly increased, uh, the speed of sound in this region would be slightly higher. So, A2 will be uh, slightly higher than A1. Now, into this slightly compressed gas, another uh, compression wave is then sent forth by the uh, piston. So, the second compression wave that comes in, uh, now it will produce another increase in pressure P3 and T3 and A3. These are all higher than P2, T2. But most importantly, the speed with which this compression, second compression wave travels uh, will be higher than the speed with which the first compression wave travelled, because um, the temperature has slightly increased uh, behind the first compression wave. Similarly, if you look at uh, all the different subsequent uh, compression waves, each compression wave uh, will have uh, speeds which are higher than the uh, previous uh, compression wave that went uh, first. That means, uh, if you allow them to be traveling inside the tube, uh, they will soon that is the um, second compression wave will soon catch up with the first compression wave. Similarly, third one will catch up and similarly, the um, uh, fourth one will catch up. So, all these compression wave come closer and closer together and then the uh, gradients and uh, the rise of pressure and temperature will become so strong that uh, ultimately you uh, get the formation of a shock wave and uh, this shock wave will then travel inside the uh, tube. So, if you look at this, then uh, this shock wave travels inside the tube shock wave uh, compresses the gas. So, immediately behind the shock wave you will have high pressures. This is P1, P2, P2 is high, T2 is high and Rho2 is high. Okay. And uh, now, from this piston uh, motion you should be able to understand that this motion of the piston is important or it is quite, uh, the shock wave is quite unlike uh, the uh, sound wave in that sense that uh, it uh, when shock wave moves it carries a certain amount of gas with it uh, and it produces a, a motion mass motion of the uh, gas with a certain velocity u2 okay so uh, uh, this is this ws is always ws by so here you have t1 uh, rho 1 and correspondingly you have a1 ws by a1 this is mach number of this shock will always be greater than 1 so shock waves always move at uh, supersonic speeds they are they are always present in uh, supersonic speeds we are discussing special uh, case of when we are considering only one dimensional flow. In a one dimensional flow, this uh, shock wave uh, will be normal to the flow direction and uh, hence uh, we call it uh, the normal shock. And uh, we saw that um, the production of this shock is actually by um, a coalescence of several compression waves and this happens due to uh, non-linear processes which produce uh, wave steepening. As these compression waves travel within the medium, they change the medium ever so slightly and uh, the subsequent compression waves actually can travel faster than the uh, first ones that went and they catch up together and uh, coalesce together to form uh, shock waves. Uh, this must also have uh, been seen uh, when we had discussed about uh, flow regimes and uh, we saw that information propagation by objects moving faster than speed of sound uh, does not happen in all uh, directions. It happens only along um, particular directions uh, 
uh, we saw that the acoustic waves produced by an object moving uh, with velocity greater than uh, speed of sound or uh, velocity greater than speed of sound uh, will not catch up with it, but rather they will all coalesce together along the Mach line. Okay. So, uh, this property of wave steepening and uh, subsequently forming uh, a sharp uh, front uh, is uh, sort of important in uh, gas dynamics and it leads to the formation of shocks. So, uh, important things are uh, is, is that uh, shock waves are present only in uh, supersonic flows. Uh, they can be uh, stationary or they can be moving. Uh, a typical example of a moving shock is when uh, shock wave is produced by sudden uh, release of a large amount of energy, uh, typical in uh, explosions or blasts. Uh, then uh, huge amount of chemical energy is uh, suddenly converted to um, heat energy and mechanical energy and uh, as a consequence uh, of that uh, the gas ahead starts moving extremely fast and you have a locally you can consider uh, the problem to be similar to uh, what is known as the piston problem or the piston analogy which we just uh, uh, discussed now and uh, in very soon it forms a shock wave and this shock wave is this first uh, precursor wave that actually uh, or it is the first uh, wave that actually passes over objects when a uh, blast uh, happens and behind it there is a sudden increase of uh, pressure, uh, temperature and uh, uh, thing. So, this, um, uh, but uh, shocks uh, also produce enormous compression uh, and also uh, along with compression simultaneously they can produce increase in temperature. Uh, this is very useful uh, for many uh, applications, uh, particularly in aerospace uh, applications where you need to compress objects. So, this uh, used uh, very uh, effectively for objects flying at speeds uh, greater than speed of sound. Um, then uh, an effect uh, where they can you can use the um, kinetic energy of the gas itself of the motion of the gas and get it converted uh, and to uh, the energy internal energy of the gas thereby increase its uh, pressure uh, that is known as shock compression and you can use that effectively in objects moving um, faster than speed of sound and uh, that is the basis for uh, several types of uh, uh, air breathing engines which do not have any uh, rotating or moving components like uh, ramjets and the uh, scramjets. So, if you are able to uh, appropriately control these uh, shock waves then uh, you can use them to compress uh, gas and besides a uh, lot of work is happening on applications of uh, shock waves in various uh, uh, fields and uh, including uh, uh, as we showed in the uh, initial slides on uh, uh, the uh, gas dynamic process uh, it is used uh, effectively in medical devices like the lithotripser. So, uh, from uh, next class what we would look at is uh, how to analyze these uh, shock waves from basic uh, gas dynamic principle, uh, relate the pressure uh, ratios across the shock waves, temperature ratios across the shock wave and uh, see what happens to entropy uh, between the after before and after the shock. What is the Mach number uh, of the flow uh, after it passes over a uh, shock? And uh, that can be the basis of uh, several applications of this uh, principle. And uh, all supersonic flows are uh, shock dominated flows, shocks are uh, present uh, all the time. Uh, 
and most of the analysis of uh, supersonic flows uh, sort of uh, uh, surrounds around uh, how to analyze different kind of shocks, their interactions from which we can know about the pressure distributions uh, and temperature distributions over uh, objects. With that uh, we will uh, close this class and uh, next class we will look more into analysis of shock waves.